All right, 35 and 12, career night for you. Just take me through what you saw out there that, that allowed you to have the opportunity you had to go off. Um, you know, I just realized they were playing me one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and it was just, I feel like it was easier to create and they were focused on me trying to back them down and you know, I just felt like it was easier for myself to score and allow my teammates to get open and create opportunities for them also. So, you know, I mean, just I just seen green, you know, like green mean go. So I just felt like, you know, we beat them out in transition and out running. I feel like, you know, it was just, just a, a race. JQ, you get to start tonight with, with Don not available. You have a productive night yourself. The next man up mentality, how much has that really helped you, Boston, in your first year here? been a lot, especially coming from Coach Tobin. He has so much confidence in me. He tells me every day, just be aggressive, just be you. And when I be me, good things happen. I just, just got to get out of my head and just be myself. Now, you were going to play for him no matter what, whether he was at FTU or, or here yep. at Iona. What about him and his system allows your game to thrive? I like I like the way Tobin just let his players play. Like, he won't hold you back. If you make a mistake, it's the next play. He wants you to be aggressive and make plays. Jeremiah, just going to the basket today uh, seemed to be the uh, the outlook, the, the plan for the game. How did you feel about that, just taking the ball to the hoop and a rebound? Uh, I feel like if you if you drive, you should get fouled. You should finish through contact. But I feel like today I seen a lot of openness because they was in zone a lot, so I drove, drove the gaps. And then in man, when they was in man, they switched a lot of ball screens. So I worked on that all week to to get to the basket and score. And six and nine shooting, uh, good shooting night for you. Are you gaining confidence? Uh, you know, you had a good game up in uh, Albany last week, and another one here tonight. Yeah, so I'm gaining a lot of confidence. Like I said, it's Coach Tobin putting a lot of confidence into me, telling me to stay aggressive, keep being me, and. Whatever happens, happens. Greg, 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 could you describe what happened during the 11-0 Fairfield run to start the game and then everything else? <clears throat> Man, it, it happened so fast, actually. You know, they kind of it, it caught us off guard, you know, made a couple bad passes, uh, a couple mistakes, not putting hands up. And, you know, Tobin, as you can see, he got into his first media timeout. He's, he's yelling at us, you know, and, I mean, he's fuming. So it was just like, all right, well, we're not – trying to deal with the consequences so of losing this game or even fumbling this game off of a 11-0 run at the start of the game. So mentality, I think I think actually all of our minds just synced in and it was like, you know, lock in, like let's yeah. let's let's lock in and, and make it work. And, you know, we fought back and then we got to rolling and we didn't look back. Yeah. What about the press after you, you picked up following that timeout really caught them off guard and how much do you feel you've improved with that? As as far as the press, yeah. Oh, the the press is definitely you know, a lot, you know people might not agree with the press at certain times, and you know, I, I feel like Tobin does a good job at incorporating us and, and letting us know like, you know, the press is what that that's what our team is. You know, if we're gonna be known for anything, we're known for the team that that will press and the team that will will try to drive teams out and 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 run them out to the, run them out the gym. You know, so the press is definitely a lot easier for us. As, as far as, like, you know, speeding teams up and getting them uncomfortable. And we played Fairfield before, so we knew, like, the press is something that would, would get under his skin. JQ was talking about how he's gained his his confidence himself. Now, as one of the more experienced players on the team, how much have you seen him evolve, and what can you say about how much he's picked up? Man, I mean, you see it. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i happy for him. I hang out with him every day. Like, I hang out with this guy every day. So to see him... From when he first got here and saying like, man, I don't know how this is gonna go for me. Like, you know, I don't know if this is the fit. Like, I don't know if I can I can do it like this. I mean, at some point, it was just you know you gotta either shut up and knock up, you know. And he bucked up and he got to where he needed to be. And you know, there's way more room for improvement from the both of us and the whole team. But I mean, if there wasn't a warrant for the most improved, I mean, he's got it. So, Greg, what was the difference tonight in closing the game out compared to Niagara and Quinnipiac? Those were the, those were the the mistakes. Those were the lessons that we learned that we didn't want to like three peat. You know, we we definitely thought to ourselves like, look, we need to close this game out. You know, and every time we huddle, you know, we just the the word that was the constant word was close out. Like close out. Like you know, we don't want to sit here. We don't want to miss free throws. We don't want to sit here and make simple mistakes. You know, so I mean, Fairfield at the top of the conference and Quinnipiac at the top and. We and um, Niagara's at the top also, and we've we fumbled games like really close. So you know, we definitely weren't trying to 
have a, another repeat of that. So that's, those are things that are running through our mind because we remember every time we get into a media timeout, I say less than eight minutes and we're up nine or so. You know, Don always says, like, we've been here before. You know, and I feel like that right there brings everybody together and locks everybody in. Greg, do you ever think about, I mean, you might be too early to ask this question, but after tonight's performance of 35 points, how far you've come from junior college till tonight? Oh, I think about it every day. <laughs> every day, you know, I was... I was just in junior college eating noodles, you know, <laughs> and we have a whole calf now. So, you know, I, I think about it every day, like the jump from junior college, you know, one of my mentors, he always says like, oh, the, like you won't ever adjust if you want to December, January, you know, and I mean, I always told him like, I'll be fine. Like I'll adjust and it's January right now and I'm, I'm adjusting pretty well. So, you know, he knows, he knows a little bit. So I think about it all the time, you know, and I'm just grateful to be here and I'm, I'm just trying to keep it rolling. Jeremiah, you, you were part of that stretch at the end where you guys were locked in at the free throw line. Both of you guys made clutch shots down the stretch. Did, did anything change compared to earlier in the game, or, or how do you approach those moments? Um, those moments, I just feel like I'm one of the best free throw shooters on the team with my percentage. So I just try to get the ball in my hands to knock down free throws, me and Greg. And me and Greg had it going. So I'd rather it be in our two hands to finish the game up. JQ, you... Um on a, on a night where this team didn't shoot that well from the line, you did again. Yep. What, what is it you think that allows you to be such a great foul shooter? Um, practice, practice, practice. Putting 100 free throws every day after practice, before practice. I just know when I get to that line, I need to knock shots down. Man, my, my fault, I got poked in my eye. Right. Greg, in the first half, you know, you're down 19-14. You got a couple of quick shots, a couple of back-to-back -back drives uh, for, uh, for points. And... Uh, you know, you really fuel that comeback, you know, in the first half, it was a 42 to 20. And then you had another hot streak when Fairfield was trying to close it. You know, you had a, you had a drive and uh, uh, made a couple of points there. Just were you really feeling good about your offense tonight? Yeah, you know, um, it, it got to the point where at some point they started doubling me, you know, and I felt like, you know, if they double me, like, they're going to leave somebody open because the four people I'm on the floor with, they can shoot the ball, Oz, Wes, JQ, and JB, you know, and I, I just felt like, you know, you know, my mentality going into the game is always the most physical man wins. But, you know, it's, it's not the greatest mentality, but that's the mentality I set for myself. I was like, the most physical man wins. Like, you know, they're going to come in here, and it's about who's tougher at the end of the stretch, you know, and I just felt like that's who I am. So. You won four out of five of your conference games. Are you really starting to feel like you're playing your best basketball or – Getting better? Um, definitely playing better, yeah. Best basketball? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We got another ceiling to tap into. Yep. Right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. <laughs> good good win for us. Um, after just a horrendous first five minutes. You know, I thought after you know, I thought you know, we haven't played in a week. I don't think that was it. I, I just I didn't I didn't get a good vibe before the game. We came out really flat, not ready to play. Um, they kinda took it to us. And they had more of an edge to us. That we kinda like our bench our bench kinda saved us. Like I thought Sultan off the bench and and um, and Terrell off the bench played well for us and got us going. And G, obviously Gene off the bench got us going. And, and then we started playing. Then Greg was Greg was terrific, and we started playing better. And then we, you know we got up we got up by what 12, 14, 15 points, and we kind of finished those games better. You know we had we had some turnovers, some bad turnovers, missed some free throws, um, gave them some second opportunities on, on the rebounding. So good win, obviously great win. You know, have, to, have to win at home. We know that we have to win at home. And uh, Fairfield's a really good team, so we're happy to get the win and and uh, you know. Get ready for Sunday. So when you spot them that head start 11 0 and 16 2, I mean, you start pressing after that. How much do you feel that turned the game back in your favor? I mean, we're trying to press the whole game. Like, we're not, we're starting the game pressing. And, like, you could just get a vibe in the, in the locker room for the game. Like, we were just like, we're quiet. Like, we're not a self starting group. It's like, and I've done too much yelling and have to and get on them and, and, and light a fire and, and motivate them and, like, it's just too much. It's too. It's too much. It's ridiculous. And I, and I told him that. I said it's, it's, it's ridiculous for us to start a game down. Six, that's a big hill to climb. Sixteen. You're down fourteen points or sixteen. Oh, that's a long ways to go. And so then we started playing. We played well. I mean, the last the last thirty five minutes played really well. So yeah, I mean, I, the, the press had an effect. Um, you know, their the big kid got hurt, so that, that hurt their depth obviously up front. So um, that makes a difference. But I think for us to score and to play well without without Edan, is a good sign. I thought, you know, they're really excited about the fact that Sultan played well, that Terrell played well. For us to do anything, it's going to be those guys helping us. We have to play nine guys. Those guys playing well is important for us. With you done on that available, JQ just to start, he has a, a good night himself. Yep. He was going to play for you no matter what. What about him attracted 
him to your system and, and how much of a fit did you see in him before he got to you? Yeah, I mean, he played in one of the best leagues in Washington, D.C., in, in the WCAC, which is like DeMatha High School, and Paul the Sixth. I mean, these teams are all – O'Connell, um, he's a Bishop McNamara, um, good counsel. These are all, like, top you – know, a lot of those schools are top 20 in the country. It's a great, it's a great high school league. So I've got – in, in my coaching career, I've had, I think, six guys from WCAC. They've all been really good players for us. So if you can play well in the WCAC, you can be a very good player – at a, at a high level in college. So we knew going into it, he'd be a good player for us. He's got a, he's got a um, no fear. I mean, not very big, right? I mean, what is he, what's he weigh, 165 pounds, but no fear, makes plays, not afraid to go in, in, in there and, and uh, hits that little, little those floaters and fadeaways. He hasn't been consistent, but he's, but he's got better at that. Um, got a little bit of an edge to him, you know? He's like, you know, chip on his shoulder, like wanting to prove himself a little bit. Um, you know, Bishop McNamara, when he did high school, is not, not the best team in that, in that league. But like he had games last year against Paul the Sixth, um, where he had like thirty some points and he played really well. So he we we knew he'd be a you know listen he was coming after you. I mean people forget that poor Jack Castleberry, my predecessor, you know the guy who followed me at not predecessor, what do you get successor sure. successor um, at FDU. I mean we had Gene and JQ and Saunders all coming to FDU, and then we we stole those guys. So I bet I did get Jack the job. So I didn't get the job. I mean, Jack got the job himself, but I kind of like you know it's like a you know. I get to take a close. They're going after. They're going after you. I mean, they're pretty good in that in that conference. So we knew that we we thought when we signed him. Both Gene and JQ were going to be um, higher level guards in that conference, and they've proven to be really good guards. And how how much about JQ's evolution so far has pleased you this season? Everything. You know, I just think he's getting better and better, and I don't think he's missed a whole lot. I don't think he's been injured. I think he's. I don't think he's missed a practice. Um, he had a shaky summer. And then he kind of like adjusted to things, and he's been he's been really good. And him and JB Joel Brown play well together because they can both play off each other a little bit. So yeah, no, he's he's been very good. So been staying on JQ, it's interesting that when the game on the line, you need someone to hit free throws. Your freshman hits your free throws. Yeah, and I wish he could get the ball more often. I wish I, I was we were a little bit frustrated with him, but we'll keep working on that. Like you know, he's a ninety percent free throw shooter, I think, right? right? Like, go get the ball. Like, he's a guy we want to get fouled. Like, he's a great free throw shooter. Like, Wes is a good free throw shooter, too, but Wes hasn't shot a lot of them. JQ shot a lot. Go get the ball, you know? Um, I was going to say, I thought Greg made four big free throws on a stretch. I mean, Greg has not been a good free throw shooter this year, but he's a tough dude. Um, he made four big free throws down the stretch, which was huge for us. But, yeah, JQ, JQ's got to be able to handle the ball in those situations. I mean, we know we've lost close games, and it, it almost felt like deja vu all over again tonight. We got, got close, and we were kind of, like, not making the plays. He's got to handle the ball because he makes free throws. That's all there is to it, you know. And like, it's hard because he's a freshman. He sometimes feels he has to defer, but he can't defer. He's got to be a little more. Um, go get the ball, make plays. How did you close it out? I mean, Greg made some plays. I mean, Greg Gordon made some plays, man. So I mean, made big free throws, but a big shot going to the basket. Maybe it was a two on one or something. I mean, went to the basket, got fouled, made two free throws. And the last play he had, where he drove the guy, bullied the guy for a layup, it was huge. We missed like there's a couple box outs we didn't get, re rebounds we didn't get. We got killed on the offensive glass early on. Just like long rebounds, loose balls we didn't get. So I thought we um, Greg made some plays, made a few free throws, but we still have to, we have to be better in those situations going forward. Coach, you won four out of five now in your conference games. What, what elements do you have to improve? How do you feel about your defense at this stage? I think it's getting better. You know, we were a little sloppy. I mean, like once again, I like to see take out the first five minutes. of the, the last part of the second half, we're pretty good defensively. I mean, Caleb Fields, they have great guards. Yeah. They're the best, best scoring team in the conference, right? So they have great guards, Goodine. Leach, um, Fields, they could really score. So, and Fields made tough shots. I mean, they made a bunch of tough shots first half, and and uh, but I think it's getting better. I think it's getting better. It's not it's not perfect. We made a lot of mistakes the first ten minutes, and we kind of like corrected those as time went along. Um, we got to be, you know, I, I told the guys the other day. I think the, the, you know the, who wins this tournament, a lot of times is the best defensive team. We got to try to get to the, be that that. And we're not there. I mean, I don't know what the numbers were tonight, but they they scored. I mean, they still scored a lot of points. They scored 82 points, um, so we have to be better. Did you feel like you made specific adjustments today down the stretch compared to Niagara or Corinthia? Not really, to be honest. We tried some zone. We tried to play a little bit of zone to slow things down, but they scored against our zone a couple times. You know, we tried to switch some ball screens, which I thought was effective at times. But, um, you know, I mean, I, it would be nice. Like, having Edan out there is a calming presence for us, I think. And so I think, you know, like, he, he missed the end of the Quimpiac game. Like, he, he like we, we need. But, like, this hopefully, when a guy goes and gets injured, you're hoping that guys who step up now, that helps in the last the last six weeks. So hopefully it helps JQ. It helps, it helps um, Greg. It helps Oz. 
without having to eat on out there. So that's that's the idea. But yeah, we we were just better. We seemed a little bit like um, I thought at Quinnipiac, the games we've lost, we kind of hung our head and felt sorry for ourselves. Or oh my God, you got to go make plays. Like good players make plays, and we we made more plays down the stretch. I thought. What's he done, status? Um, dated. I mean, he shot. He was shooting before the game, and I missed. He must have made about forty threes in a row. I'm like, we can't just put you out there and just, just you know, roll you out there and, and make threes against their zone. Um, I think he's making very good progress. Um, he, I don't think he'll play, you know, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. We'll, I mean, we're hoping tomorrow you wake up a bad ankle, like all of a sudden it feels a lot better tomorrow. We'll see if it's a day-by-day thing, you know. But I've been making progress, and we're being patient. 35-12 and 12 from Greg. What do you think he saw from Fairfield that allowed him to have the night he had? I just thought he was aggressive, right? I mean, he just was aggressive. Like, the first half, he started having a little bit of success going to the basket and, and uh, making plays. He's also a very good passer, too. He, made some, he, made, he hit some guys for some shots. And um, he's a mismatched prop because he's so big and strong and athletic. So I thought he just got it going a little bit. And he was terrible the first five minutes. And I got on him pretty hard. And there have been some times this year, because it's all new to him, he hasn't responded. I thought he responded great tonight. Like, his, his, his whole body language, his whole, his whole approach got a lot better. So... You know, he's like all these guys, like when they make a couple shots, they get a little more, they get a little more, they feel a little bit better about themselves, you know, but you got to learn how to play when you're not making shots too. But no, no, he was, he was, he was terrific and he, he been, a, you know, his impact of the game was, was phenomenal. Maybe not verbatim, but like, what are you saying to those guys into the timeouts when you're being so animated? Well, the first two timeouts, I was about ready to kill the whole group of them. I mean, it was just ridiculous. I mean, we've gone for a week, and like we were, you know, we're as prepared, like just like Fairfield's prepared, and everybody else is prepared. We prepared, like we didn't do anything even close to what we were trying to do. So, um, I was on their ass pretty hard, you know, about like, like let's let's we gotta play. I mean, harder, tougher. Do what we do be more physical? And it's like I spent the whole first half, most timeouts, trying to get to that point. You know, like it's a lot easier when you don't have to coach effort and energy. I've coached effort and energy way too much this year. Um, I'm hoping we can eventually get to the point where I don't have, I can do more of like schematic stuff, X and O wise, how we're playing, things like that, as opposed to coaching effort and energy. You know, I mean, the guys who brings the energy, like me, Kyle Washington, my assistant brings energy, but the big guy on the bench, he brings Pat Wallace. Like, it can't come from us all the time, and it's coming too much from like, we're the, we're not a high energy team, right? Until we get mad or get our backs against the wall or things are not going well. But you can't do that all the time because you can't always. I mean, like we're down sixteen to two, like that's hard to come back from. It could it could have gone the other way too. I mean, it goes sixteen to two, obviously it goes twenty four to two or twenty four to four. Twenty points a long ways to go. The one good thing is when you're down, the first five minutes there's a lot of time left in the game to come back. So we we were able to had time to fix our problems. Coach, but a lot of it's energy and effort. Coach, tell me, can you talk about the leadership of some of the players? You know, you've got a number of graduate yep. students. You got Oz, who's been here. Yep. Who provides leadership when the team needs it? Well, I thought Edom was great on the bench tonight. Like, if you watched him at all, I think I think sometimes when a guy's out for a couple of games, it really helps him to see the whole the whole game. So Edom's been really good. He's talking to the guys at halftime. He's talking to them before the game. He's talking to them on the bench. He was good. Um, who else is good? I mean, Greg kind of leads by example. We have a lot of guys who lead by example. That's that, or they try to lead by example. It'd be nice to have a guy who was just a. Um, Grab someone by the shirt and say, let's get this thing going, you know? We don't have those kind of personalities, so it's kind of a group thing, you know? Um, at times, everybody kind of puts their nose in there and does a little bit of help, but it's like, Edan's probably the, the best leader we've had. Um, Joel's good, too, but he's a little bit up and down. Oh, but the motion offense is clearly improving from, like, a month ago. Is yep. that something you're feeling better about? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're, we're sharing the ball more, playing more unselfishly, like... I mean, that's what motion offense does. I mean, you run, you run, you run set plays. Set plays are good in November, and then all of a sudden you get to to December, January, February, and everybody knows the set plays, right? Motion offense gets better. We work on it. We spend time on it. It improves, and hopefully, it's, it's at its best like come come February, March. That's that's the idea of motion offense. Like we're trying to get you know better. It's not plays that win games. It's, it's better players and, and better better with what we do. You know, like our press, our press has gotten better. Our press is better tonight. I mean, I don't know how many times we turn them over. They they were. They they had to play faster than they wanted to play. They had fourteen turnovers. We had harder we, to press them because they have good guards. Yeah, harder. Yep, yep. But I thought we wore them down. I thought there was. I thought there was. They were a little bit tired, you know. So, um, but they have they have great guards. They have great. You have, you have to just do the best job you can on their guards and figure out a way to, to get stops and hope they miss some shots and and. But yeah, we, we turn them over fourteen times. That's that's not bad for the, for that for that lineup, you know. And I thought the press was. I thought we kind of like let off our the foot off the gas in the second half a little bit.